In the world of motorsport, the 24 Hour of Le Mans holds a special place, and in the 1960s, Ferrari's dominance seemed unshakable. However, Ford determined to challenge the Italian automaker embarked on a journey to build a car that would dethrone Ferrari. This led to the creation of the Ford GT40, equipped with a powerful 427 engine. So today, I welcome you to join me as we delve into the challenges faced by Ford, the innovations they made, and how the GT40 with its formidable 427 engine ultimately achieved victory at Le Mans. Now, this video won't be quite as cool as the Ford vs Ferrari movie, but I want to do it a little different. I want to go into the engine and development behind how Ford used the more brute force power route to beat Ferrari's more sophisticated V12s. So let's start at the beginning, building a competitive contender. Ford's racing program lacked experience in endurance racing, so they sought out an existing chassis to begin their project. The Lola MK6 chassis became the foundation of the GT40. This chassis then got mated with the 4.7 litre Fairlane V8 engine, and this car made its debut at the 1964 Nürburgring race. However, initial reliability issues plagued the car, and all three GT40s that were sent to Le Mans that year retired prematurely, allowing Ferrari to claim yet another victory. But Ford didn't give up. You see, following the disappointing results of the previous year, the legendary Carroll Shelby joined the team to lead the GT40 project. Together with driver Ken Miles and engineer Phil Remington, they set out to improve the GT40's performance. Their efforts paid off when the GT40 secured its first win at Daytona in February 1965, marking a turning point for the program. And this is when the mighty 427 made its entrance. You see, meanwhile, back in Michigan, Roy Lunn and his team developed a new version of the Ford GT40 equipped with a formidable and legendary 427 engine. This power plant, based on the Gen 2 FE 427 block from Ford's NASCAR program, offered increased power and improved reliability. Now, the reason for the 427 was because of racing regulations. You see, the rules in Le Mans back then limited engines to be smaller than 7 liters or smaller than 427 cubic inches. And the engine in the GT40 was 425.98 cubic inches or 6.9 liters. So the engine was pretty much as big as possible proving the statement many Americans always use. No replacement for displacement. But brute power wasn't the only focus when it came to the GT40. They also wanted to make it as light as possible. And remember, this big American V8 is quite heavy. So to compete against Ferrari's lighter and higher revving V12 engines, weight reduction was crucial. The 427 engine underwent significant modifications to shed weight while maintaining its strength. Lightweight aluminium alloy was used to design new cylinder heads, a new intake manifold, new timing cover, and new water pump. Additionally, a cast magnesium oil pan replaced the stock version, contributing further to weight savings. But they didn't stop there. As endurance racing required specific adaptions for the GT40 to excel, a novel dry sump oiling system was developed, featuring high pressure and scavenge pumps integrated into the oil pan. This not only optimized oiling, during high-speed cornering, but also lowered the engine's center of gravity. The carburetor designed by Harold Droste from Holly incorporated central pivot float ballast to prevent fuel from sloshing during intense driving maneuvers. Then another innovation was the intricate exhaust system, known as the Bundle of Snakes. Inspired by Formula 1 designs, this exhaust header featured tubes crossing from one bank to the other to enhance exhaust scavenging. And um, it looked pretty freaking insane. Just take a look at how this thing's exhaust looks. Imagine having to build that. So what did all of this result in terms of actual power? Well, in its single carb configuration, coupled with a specially built 4-speed transaxle from Carcraft, the 427 engine produced 485 horsepower at 6,200 rpm and 644 Nm of torque at 3,600 rpm, which was quite a bit more than the Ferraris made. The experimental GT40 dubbed the GT40X, equipped with a refined GT40 chassis, and powerful 427 engine was tested by Ken Miles at Ford's Proving Ground in Michigan. 
Mars, impressed by the car's potential, played a vital role in its development, and he eagerly sought the opportunity to race it at Le Mans. With just a month to prepare, Shelby American and Ford worked tirelessly to improve the GT40X, resulting in the creation of the GT40 Mark II, addressing the previous shortcomings. The GT40 Mark II was ready to challenge Ferrari once again at the 1965 edition of Le Mans. Now, unfortunately, 1965 didn't go as planned, and Ford's cars didn't finish. While the GT40 and its 427 engine were remarkable, the road to victory was not without its hurdles. Reliability issues and gearbox failures plagued earlier iterations of the GT40, preventing Ford from securing a victory at Le Mans. But Ford was ready, had the knowledge, the drivers and the car to be a real competitor in the following year. So, 1966 rolled around. Ford entered a formidable lineup of GT40 Mark II cars, each powered by the mighty 427 engine. The GT40s exhibited exceptional performance with their powerful V8 engines, roaring through the French countryside. With the GT40 Mark II and its powerful 427 engine, Ford achieved an unprecedented 1-3 finish at Le Mans in 1966. The cars demonstrated outstanding endurance, speed and reliability, breaking Ferrari's six-year winning streak and proving that the American muscle was superior to the sophisticated Italian B12s on the grandest stage of them all. The Le Mans victory in 1966 was not the one-time fluke either. You see, the following year saw Ford's continued dominance at Le Mans, with three more wins in 1967, 1968 and 1969. Notably, the 1968 and 1969 victories were secured by specially prepared GT40s powered by a smaller 302 4.9 litre V8 engine. But the 427 left its mark. The 427 engine of the GT40 remains as an engineering legend and one of the most successful race bred power plants in American history. Its immense power combined with its innovative design and continuous refinement propelled Ford to conquer Le Mans and solidified the GT40's place in motorsport history. Now I don't even know at the end of this video, this is just such a cool piece of racing history. And it's things like this that just furthers my love for cars and cool engines. Nothing beats a well-engineered engine coupled to a good chassis. And then if there's a good story that goes with it, it's just better. But let me know down below what you think of this car and engine. Um, and let me know if there's any other cool like racing cars from the past that you want me to make a video on. Um, I'll, I'll read through the comments. So if there's something that like really catches my attention, I'll make a video on it. And then it will come out soon-ish. Yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this video, please have a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like all of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.